Okay, welcome to um, City of Capitola Planning Commission meeting. This meeting is open to the public with both in-person attendance at the City of Capitola Council Chambers at 420 Capitola Avenue and remote assistance or attendance as, as possible, excuse me. Planning Commission and staff are attending in person and remotely via Zoom. There are several ways for the public to watch and participate. Information on how to join the meeting via Zoom and make public comment during the meeting is available on our website, cityofcapitola.org on the meeting agenda. The public can also live stream the meeting on city's website or on YouTube. As always, this meeting is cablecast live on Spectrum Communications, cable TV channel eight and at verse channel 99 and is being recorded to be broadcast on the following Mondays and Fridays at 1 p.m. on Spectrum channel 71 and Spectrum channel 25. A recording of the meeting will also be available on the city's website after the meeting. Our technician tonight is Walter. As a reminder, please turn off your cell phones during the meeting. <laughs> All right, so um, that brings us to our first item is roll call and Pledge of Allegiance. Commissioner Wilk. Here. Commissioner Esty. Here. Commissioner Jensen. Here. Vice Chair Here. Um, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to oral communications, um, additions and deletions to the agenda. Yeah, uh, we have for item 3B, the Esplanade, uh, we have two additions to the agenda, uh, one email. Uh, was received with some comments from a member of the public, and then the applicant provided some uh, floor plans of the entry proposed uh, at the front of Pizza My Heart. And those are in, at you, in front of you at the dais and also at the back table. Thank you. Um, as we're moving down to item B is public comment. Please review the notice, uh, remote access for instructions, short communications from the public concerning matters not on the agenda. All speakers are required to print their name on the sign-in sheet located at the podium so that their name may be accurately recorded in the minutes. Members of the public may speak up for three minutes unless otherwise specified by the chair. Individuals may not speak for more than once during the oral communications. All speakers must address the entire legislative body and will not be permitted to engage in dialogue. Um, any commission comments? Or? Um, I just I had one. Sure. Sorry. Um, I was wondering, um, in the future meetings coming up, um, and maybe like under director's report, um, Brian, if tonight or maybe in the future, Katie, um, if we could kind of share what the forecast of like agenda might be looking like for some of the projects coming up. Um, you know, if there's. Looks like we have a full agenda for next couple meetings or if there's larger projects that's coming in and then maybe also a little bit under maybe public um, noticing if um, as commissioners maybe we could receive some of those um, that I know get sent out from a 10 day standpoint. So might not be prepared for tonight, but maybe in the future meetings if we could kind of have a, a snapshot outlook in the future. Yeah, I, I think there's a couple of things we can we can definitely do there. Uh, we can include a little bit more detail as to uh, and upcoming uh, items on your agenda. So we do, as a staff, we do a three-month look ahead so we can we can share that with the commission. And then uh, when we also send public noticing, we can inform the commission as well so you don't have to wait till the actual formal agenda comes out. So th those are things we, we can do pretty easily. Right. Great. That would be helpful. Thank you. And we briefly went over public comments, but was there any general public comments? Nothing, seeing none, okay. Um, staff comments, item D, do you guys have anything? Yeah, we have no comments this evening, thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so that mo we're moving on to the public hearing, is item three. 
Public hearings are intended to provide an opportunity for public discussion of each item listed as a public hearing. Um, first item on the agenda is 520 Riverview Drive. Permit number is 220056. It's a design permit to remodel a two-story residence with variance requests for the required minimum setbacks and minimum floor area ratio. The project is located within the R1 single family residential zoning district. This project is in the coastal zone, but does not require a coastal development permit. Thank you and good evening commissioners and vice chair Christensen. The application before you today is a design permit and variance, and this is located at 520 Riverview Drive. The variance requests include the minimum setbacks as well as the maximum floor area ratio in order to remodel and construct additions. This is located in the Riverview Terrace neighborhood in the R1 zoning district. This is the existing house as it appears today. And this is the proposed site plan. The additions would increase the existing dwelling by about 115 square feet. Currently, the site does not have any on-site parking. Because the additions do not exceed 10% of the existing floor area ratio, it would not be required to provide the current requirement of two parking spaces. However, the applicant is still proposing a substandard parking space on the northern side of the, the home there. I'm just gonna go through the floor plans and elevations quickly here. These are the proposed first and second story floor plans. These are the existing elevations. And these are the proposed elevations. <clears throat> the project, as I mentioned before, includes several variance requests. I've summarized those in a table shown above, namely the first and second story side setback or the northern property line there. Yeah, that is for the, the requirements are for seven feet and 10 feet. This would enable them to build up to four feet on the ground floor and nine feet, nine inches on the second story. The rear yard to the uh, right there would also likewise be uh, able to be constructed up to four feet from the property line. And lastly, there is a request for the maximum floor area ratio to go up by about 1.3% or 30 square feet from 58 percent to 59.3 percent. <clears throat> As described in the report, the unique, there are unique circumstances applicable to the subject property uh, as well as the project itself. The property is a triangular lot with its front side being the widest property line. The strict application of, of setbacks on a triangular lot imposes disproportionately limiting setbacks with a low efficiency building envelope. The lot is also small by capital standards. It's about 2,241 square feet, whereas the smallest standard R1 lot is typically a 40 by 70 lot or 2,800 square feet. So this is the equivalent of about 80% of that. The variance enables a modest expansion to the existing residence, both in terms of the setbacks as well as the floor area ratio. All additions would maintain a minimum setback from any property line of four feet. Additionally, the, the home would be modified by removing several sections of, of, of the structure that are closer than four feet to the existing property line. So they would be cut back to four feet as well. And with that, staff is recommending approval of the project based on the conditions and findings of approval. If you, anyone would like to have any questions about the material covered in their report, I have questions. I, I, I'm sorry, I had one question. I saw the, um, the first time it came in, it had a potential ADU, and then that's been removed in this latest scheme. Is there history behind the ADU being removed, or is it just the applicant decided to remove it? Yeah, it's my understanding that the owner was looking to construct an ADU as just a possible advantage as well as to take advantage of the 
development standards that are more relaxed with certain types of ADUs. We, because of the uniqueness of this site, we were uh, able to be supportive of uh, variance findings, which sort of negated some of those benefits if the Planning Commission concurs with our findings. Um, so I believe it was the, the decision of the owner. The owner and architect are both in the meeting, so if they would like to add to that, they're, they're available. Just looking for numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Are there any other questions for staff? Okay. Um, would the applicant like to come up and say? Good evening, my name is Martha Matson, and I'm the architect for the project. Um, I'm here with Tara Gunderson, uh, it's also her Gundersgard, excuse me. Uh, it's her residence, obviously. Um, and uh, I just wanna say briefly, I want to thank staff, uh, planning staff, as well as Public Works for working with us on this project. It's been, it's a complicated site. Um, and just to quickly answer your question, I do wanna say that uh, situations, it's been, this has been a long, couple years and situation has changed for our client. She's had two children, so twin twin girls. So that's sort of changed some of our thinking as to what would work best for the house, um, as well as working with planning staff um, to give us some of the, the variances. Um, I'm available for questions and so is Tara. So thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody here to speak to the project? None. I want to bring it back to the commission. Does anybody have anything? Any questions? No? Mm -hmm. I'll move approval of staff recommendation. I'll second that. We have a first and a second. We have a roll call. Commissioner Wilk? Aye. Commissioner Aye. Commissioner Jensen? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, you're approved. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item B, I have to step out. Um, Commissioner Wilk will step in to operate the rest of the meeting. Thank you. I'll wait for your Thanks. gentle exit. Okay, item B is 207, 209, 209, 209A, and 211 Esplanade. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, a historic alteration permit. And um, do we have a staff presentation? Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Wilk, and good evening, Commissioners. Um, picking this item up uh, for Director Hurley, he was not able to meet, make the meeting, uh, but you did as a body review this uh, last <coughs> month at the March meeting, and um, so this is coming back with the response to some of the suggestions heard at that meeting, uh, and just got the photo up here. This is four tenant spaces, uh, 207 through 211 Esplanade. So the, just a brief background, it won't uh, take too long here, is there was some storm damage. Uh, there has been some ongoing emergency and in-kind replacements that are underway currently. Uh, along with that, the owner is seeking to um, also modify and repair some portions of the facade, uh, which is what is before you this evening. And uh, the commission's primary feedback was relative to the character and the pattern uh, and differentiation between the different tenants. Uh, the four different tenants and to uh, encourage the applicant to use some more color and materials to make distinctions between the tenant spaces. So um, top left here, this is uh, the pre-storm street view. Uh, the upper right, just to jog your memory, this is what was presented last time you saw the project. Uh, there was uh, a lot more of kind of a unified use of stucco. Um, there was some individual character with the, the various door drops, but um, with the proposal before you tonight, uh, there's a lot of vertical articulation uh, in, in terms of defining each of the individual spaces, which is sort of brought back from what was existing in the pre-storm condition, and that's on the bottom. So each of these spaces has kind of its own 
uh, shoulder to shoulder space along the street frontage and I'm going to get into each of these individual details uh, and the use of the various materials that are being proposed. So uh, for reference, uh, the, the existing condition at Sandbar on the upper left and then the lower right uh, with the various material call outs is uh, what's being proposed. So uh, the one unifying feature I'll, I'll point out in this first slide is this canopy uh, with the corbel supports below. Uh, this does carry through end to end, uh, but the rest of, of the tenant frontages are, are basically unique uh, compositions of materials and colors. And so that with this uh, at Sandbar, the proposal is to use a ribbed tile surround at the uh, three pane window uh, and to also use a different uh, dark western red cedar up along the parapet and at the door drop. And then uh, at the far right, this is actually just an uh, electrical closet and portion of the parapet that serves as sort of a bookend. And this is a, a smooth stucco with uh, a white dye. Uh, moving to the left, uh, this is Pizza My Heart, so this is, would be the same smooth stucco at the top with, at the parapet with the white dye color. Uh, you, you can see the corbel and awning carrying through, and with this proposal, uh, there's actually a change to the, the customer circulation pattern. Uh, so if you, you are familiar with the property or you can look at the upper left-hand photo, there's a single entry and exit with uh, a large alcove space and um, with customers queuing, if they uh, have a busy lunch or um, weekend crowd, uh, the, the doorway can become a bit of a bottleneck. And so the idea is to take this opportunity and introduce a new, uh, a new door and then uh, move the orientation of the window toward the center of that space. So two new alcoves uh, and would allow uh, entry and exit uh, one way direction. And so uh, applicant is, is provided a bit more detail just because this does involve circulation and a bit of the interior space. So they're demonstrating to, to us here how the uh, ADA and various clearance requirements would work as well as door swings and uh, the, the entry and exit. And uh, we, you can also see that the window opening itself is cut down a bit um, by about just under three feet. Um, I, we do have a, an added condition here just because of the door swings uh, do project beyond the front facade of the building. Um, just as kind of a footnote, I'll get into that in a few slides. But um, basically the Public Works Department is not uh, supportive of any further obstruction. So this design would need to be refined a bit, but in concept. Uh, moving on to the, the bay bar, um, this is also a proposed stucco, but this is a, um, a modeled green finish, uh, and again would be a, a mix-in stucco color, so it's not an applied paint, it's more, it works more like a dye mixed into the stucco mixture. And the same uh, awning carrying through. And then Mai Tai Beach is back to the white, smooth stucco finish. Uh, the windows at, at Mai Tai Beach are an existing um, vinyl window, and uh, the city's uh, architectural consultant uh, wanted, wanted the applicant to consider uh, trying to enhance those windows a bit, and so the applicant is proposing a frame around them uh, to match the awning in a western red cedar. So big picture view, this is the zoom out uh, of the entire end-to-end -end length of all the, the tenant units. And then this is looking from the other direction. And then now we'll move around to the, the back side. Um, so what you saw a month ago uh, was the option on the upper right again. Uh, and then what is being proposed now is, uh, is on, down below. So not much of a change here. Um, the one thing uh, being introduced is, uh, or I, I should just call out that the stucco is really end to end, so it's from um, from the end here at the the beach access all the way through, carrying all the way through the four tenant spaces, and then the same um, kind of window framing 
uh, but it's a different material that, that's being introduced at this rear elevation. It's a, called a ceramic neolith and is meant to riff off of a, a Corten steel type of applied material. And then there's also a sliding shutter being introduced in this um, that would be an operable, uh, could, it'll add an ability to shade those windows if they're getting direct sun. Uh, and this is at the back of Mai Tai Beach, or they could be uh, just kind of an architectural feature, but are, are an operable shutter. And so getting into the, these uh, added conditions, so number 18 is relative to the, the door swing. So um, door swings out into the sidewalk, it's, it's public right of way, it's typically not something that uh, the city is wanting to perpetuate. I think there are a few doors that do swing maybe a few inches into the right of way uh, if you walk down and, um, and look, but uh, being that we are looking at a new application here, uh, we need to make sure that we move forward in, a, in the correct direction and, and not have private improvements swinging into the sidewalk. So simply adding a condition that this design be refined to, to do that. Uh, and then number 19 is uh, just a statement of, of the, essentially for the record, um, commenting that the individual identity and the design of the tenant spaces is uh, to be maintained and reflect the historic pattern and character of the village. So with that, we are recommending uh, approval of this this evening. I, th we, I think we can, we can manage the, uh, the door swing issue through a building permit. And uh, with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, questions of staff? Um, yes, yeah, so I have, sorry, I have about uh, six or so here. Um, so just confirming the stucco is gonna be a color coat stucco. Um, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Um, and then um, I guess the question I was, I was reading this staff report talked about the windows that were existing, that they were damaged um, during the storm and replaced. That's not for the windows in the front, that's only the windows that are in the rear of the project? That's right, the, the windows at the rear of, of Mai Tai Beach were damaged. So the ones that, um, I just think the, the consultant <coughs> was RRM had just concerns about those windows, but they're existing now and so they were replaced previously under building permit or an improvement and they're vinyl at the time and they're remaining, right? That's correct, yeah. We, we, did, we were able to find some records that those windows were existing at least back from 2012. Okay. And the new windows that were put in the back were vinyl and that's because they were replaced like kind? Correct. And that's just, and they were, they're allowed to be replaced like kind because of the storm damage from the emergencies? And they've are, they've, they have been replaced. The, one of the photos uh, that I showed does show that they were a like kind replacement. All right, um, I don't know if we have the photo, but um, some of the comments I've gotten about, uh, about the building from the historical part. Before, the building now doesn't have the soft, if we want to call it, running all the way through, right? It stops and doesn't go across my tie, correct? That's correct. But now it's being proposed it's going to? Yes. And going back and looking at the history, wasn't there a photo that we saw on the March meeting that showed it at one time that continued all the way across? That's right. There was a prior tenant that had... So historically, it did go across and it, it was did. cut back at some time. We don't know when. And now we're looking at proposing to put it back to how it was. And when do you think was that, in like the 50s? Uh, I, have, I have some of those slides. If you want, I can scroll through here and see. There you go. Uh, yeah, there's one of them. So uh, if you see on the, this arrow to the left is pointing at a, what was the canopy. Right. It's a canopy ran across and then for some reason. Yeah. They took it out. There it is again. So that's a Pelican Cafe is, is what, what is Mai Tai now. Okay. And so we probably think the original construction probably had it continuous, right? That's right. Guessing? Yes. Yeah. All right. And then um, my next question is around the corbels. I think at our last meeting we talked, there's some sensitivity around like the historical features of some of the building with the corbels. And I saw on the plans that the new corbels were called out to be steel. How or is that going to be addressed to be changed so aesthetically they look like these corbels in time or what's the corbel? I didn't see the exact corbel detail obviously yet, but 
is that being like something that's being highlighted so that the historical feature stays kind of the way it is? Yeah, I, I understand from the applicant and, and, and they are here. Um, the architect can probably comment with more specificity, but I understand it's, it's supposed to essentially be the same presence uh, in terms of its dimension and its radius and its location and rhythm along the along the um, underside of the awning. So I, I understand it to be uh, it's new material and it's it's replacement, um, but it's supposed to represent the same. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I think those are all my questions. Thank you. Paul. Yeah. So um, Scott Martin had, you know, he sent you a memo with his conclusions, but he had some potential clarification or improvements. Are we going to talk about those tonight? Is the applicant going to, or are you going to discuss any of that stuff? Um, I, I have it here. I, I can walk through those. Um, one, one thing I will say that in, in just in the sequencing of um, his final comments were uh, actually, for the most part, addressed in what was presented this evening, because um, it was kind of happening in real time, mm -hmm. and we had a, a conference call, and then the applicant had already made a revision, and then we got his final uh, oh. comments. So okay. most of it was picked up, actually, in what is being presented tonight. OK, because there were some material suggestions they that he had. I don't know if we made changes based on that, but. Niels? Was he, what are we doing? We were looking up more uh, input. Um, I'm not seeing that I have it here. I, I can get to it though. Oh. Are there any other questions? No, no just the, he's got, I don't know, eight, eight things at the bottom, potential clarification or improvements, in, including the uh, discussion about ADA clearances and things like that. I'm just so curious where we are. The biggest concern that they, they had was the vinyl windows, but the, the status of those being existing and replaced in kind, uh, eventually they kind of yeah. backed off of the, the comment. Yeah. Okay, and I would agree with that. Okay, thanks. Question about your condition on the op on the doors. Um, I, I, the issue, of course, is you don't want the doors in the public walkway. I'm just wondering if how flexible you'll be. Uh, maybe there's accordion doors, or there's something that where when they're open, they might temporarily be in the public walkway. But when you collapse them and you fix them, there. So uh, you'll be appreciative of any clever. Uh, solutions they have to the public walkway, right? I mean, we're mostly just concerned that when they're in business and the doors are open, the walkway's clear. Yep. And if they can come up with a creative solution that solves that, we're good. Yeah, I, I, I think. Okay. I, I'm sorry, I do have one follow-up question. Um, with the new window replacement that's going to go in at Pizza of My Heart, will that be a window like kind then? So that will not be a vinyl window? Uh, I, I understand there's uh, the applicant is ready to comment a little bit about that window uh, because of the the nature of kind of designing and having some real uh, site conditions. I think there's a structural component they wanted to speak to tonight. Okay. Uh, but I understand that window to be a, a wood frame window. Okay. Perfect. All right, then let's move on to public comment. Um, if the applicant would like to begin, that's okay. Uh, if you'd like to wait till the end, that's okay. But we're ready to hear any public comment on this item. And if you could sign in or let us know who you are so that we have your name for the record, that'd be appreciated. Good evening, commissioners and uh, staff. Uh, thanks for considering this, uh, this option and the second round of this tonight has been fantastic. I first want to thank staff. Uh, Brian and Katie have been just incredible uh, working with us and the owners on this project. And thank you for your comments from the previous meeting. And 
we've tried to do our best to address them. Uh, my name is Dan Townsend. I'm with Fuse Architects. Uh, last time was my business partner here. Uh, Dan Gomez was uh, presenting. Um, I can answer any questions you have. I know you have specific questions, and I have some um, some comments that I'd like to make that would be added to the record from discoveries that we found today as well. Uh, but do you have specific questions? Uh, the questions you listed before, uh, would you like to ask those? I just had a question like in detail, just if the new window going at peace of my heart, since there's some sensitivity around vinyl windows, is that window going to be wood window then to stay in, in the character of what it is now? Or? Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you for asking that question. So the windows that are at Mai Tai Beach are the only ones that are vinyl that will stay vinyl. Um, those ones were uh, replaced in kind, as, as we had mentioned, and the uh, consultant architect had um, made a comment about all of the windows, and we came to an agreement to just leave the Mai Tai uh, ones alone. The other windows and the other, uh, and the other tenant spaces are, are going to match the wood color that they're associated with. So the Pizza My Heart window is actually a wood-clad window. Um, and the two entrances that we're discussing, there's a couple of clarifications I'd like to make on some discoveries today. There's a brick facade at Mai Tai and um, at the adjacent tenant space that comes to about 42 inches or maybe 36 inches that sticks out of the wall um, ab about eight inches. We do intend to stucco over that, um, that brick material. The original plan was to remove the brick. Uh, but it looked waterproofing-wise and structure-wise, it looked better. I think it's going to be better if we stucco over that brick, which makes it so the doors that come out of Pete's Bay Heart don't, won't actually protrude into the public right-of-way. Um, we were intending to remove the brick, then they would, but uh, the doors will come just about to where that big brick facade is and where the new stucco line will be, so they won't be protruding into the public right-of-way as, as shown in the plans quite as much. So question to staff, does that mean the bricks are currently protruding in the public walk right away? Yeah, let's, let's look at a photo here, because I got to look at are, are the, the bricks are not carrying through on, on Bay Bar. They aren't. They go through Mai Tai Beach. The previous photograph actually showed it up on the upper left, upper there it is there on the upper left. Do you see the brick below the windows? If you can see that there, that's, that's the brick that we in, intended to remove around the side down the alley to the beach as well. And uh, today, looking at the construction of the wall, it looks better to, I, I think it's better for us to leave that brick there and stuck over the top of it. But that does have, we're, we're not cleaning it up quite like that where it shows in the bottom right photo. There's brick there that, that uh, protrudes out. I don't know if that line of brick is at the public right away or not, but the doors won't come uh, as far out as the plans show by leaving that brick. Uh, the window at Pizza My Heart, that center window, they business kind of uses it for a pass through of stuff. Is that is that going to open up like the existing or the old one did? At Pizza My Heart, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's another thing that we wanted to bring up tonight. Uh, this is just based on observations today. We had um, the structural engineer was out of the site today and has a history with the building. Uh, the, if you flip, Brian, if you could flip to the shot of Pizza My Heart. <coughs> yeah, we're the, there. the window that we're showing, or the upper left photograph where you see that existing window, that, that's a wood frame window that um, rolls up like a garage door. Yep. Uh, we had proposed in the bottom right photo to move that window over to help with these two, with the new entrance on the right. Mm -hmm. That uh, right below that corbel that's there is a pretty major six by six structural column uh, that we don't want to remove. Um, it's connected into the beach wall uh, below uh, under the sidewalk surface. So the engineer was hesitant in having us pull that column out. So uh, the owners of Pizza My Heart and the building owners were there this morning and and we decided to leave that column there and have two of those doors, just smaller, on both sides of that uh, major structural element. Two windows? Uh, two roll-up doors, just like this. Oh, it's, it, yeah, they roll up like a garage door. Yeah. And we're gonna pull that window, that, well, we'll call it a door, because it's like a garage door. We're gonna pull that one out and move it over to the adjacent space. It fits kind of 
it'll actually remove two of the vinyl windows windows that the consultant architect didn't like, right. and we're going to put this window in that space or door. And my understanding was you're going to be completely demoing all the stucco off the building. Is that true? Uh, demo the stucco off the building? Likely not. It's a, we're going to go over the top of the stucco that's there. I thought there was a note in there about that it was about the waterproofing and all that, um, and the stucco was going to be removed. Is that? Uh, so it's just going to be a, a new skim coat over top of the existing. Uh, more than a skim coat, it'll be it'll be glued on. It'll be, have a thickness to it like uh, typical stucco does. Okay. Some parts of the stucco will need to come off just to for roof to wall flashing for that for the uh, canopy there and some other waterproof connections, but. The entirety of the stucco will likely not come off. So in addition to the eight inches that may already encroach into the public sidewalk, are you going to put stucco on top of that, which is going to add perhaps another half inch? Uh, yeah, it, it's hard to say how thick it will be. It'll be something like that. That's at the Mai Tai location. Um, and the uh, bay bar next to it has kind of a wood facade that somebody placed over the brick. Uh, that wood facade will be removed and stucco will be in its place, which will occupy slightly less space than the existing wood facade over the brick, if that makes sense. It doesn't make sense. So I'm looking at the Mai Tai Beach and the picture showed the brick. Yes. So you're, you're going to take the brick and stucco over it. Yes. And, and so I missed this, the issue about the wood. The bay bar um, oh, okay, next to it, somebody in the past has applied wood over the brick and that has about an inch and a half of thickness. You can see it's like a, a blue, uh, kind of a dark blue. If okay, we have but that's not, imp that's not impinging into the public right-of-way. I'm not sure where the public right-of-way line is, where the actual line yeah, is, but that either. wood is coming off and stucco is going on, which will take up a little bit less space than the wood did. Got it. At that location. Thank you. Each location has kind of its own um, facade and we're trying to tie them back together but give them their own unique look. Uh, any other questions or any other comments you'd like to make about your proposal? There is a question about the corbels. Uh, those, the corbels are proposed to be steel. Uh, the, the existing canopy is covered in stucco. It's heavy, we're trying to lighten it up. Um, part of one of the corbels was demolished, the stucco was removed, and it was a wood, just a wood, simple wood two by four structure uh, at a 45 degree and then they've stuccoed to make that arc. Hmm. So we're proposing steel corbels that will follow the original uh, arch and then cedar underneath the canopy to kind of lighten that whole thing up. It's a little too heavy for what's behind it. That's all I have. And the height of the parapet, that's all been worked out. There was some question about that. There was some question about that. We do intend to, um, there was a proposal to raise it 18 inches at one time and the commission and the consulting architect had a comment about that. So that's been uh, lowered. Okay, great. So the, each facade goes up to the top of the parapet now. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Townsend. You're welcome. Are there any other members of the comment who wish to discuss this item? Any on Zoom? Okay, uh, with that then we'll bring it back to Council for deliberation. Anybody want to jump in on this? Um, the only comment I had is just that um, I appreciate that um, from our last comments that the project has now taken on, I think, more of an appearance of the four, and I just hope that we, um, that that would stay in the future, you know, as the project or tenants change, that we're sensitive to that we, the appearance and the history of the building looks like it was four buildings and that I think we've kind of achieved that, or they've achieved that at this round. And that, um, I appreciate that effort, and hopefully that stays with us as tennis change or things change down there. Yeah, there was a, a public comment about this looks too much strip mallish, um, but a, my, my opinion is that they've done a good job of answering our request for differentiating the storefronts. So I, I, I don't think it really looks like a mostly Southern California strip mall. I think it's... It's, More of a Northern California strip. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not exactly the historical thing like the 1958 picture, but it's certainly differentiated um, better than uh, what we saw before. Well, I like you guys' opinion on this uh, encroachment. So we, they put in kind of a last-minute uh, condition about the doors not encroaching into the walkway, 
If I look at it, it looks like, okay, that's a six inch encroachment on the public walkway. Public Works says, no, 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 we've got to start being better about that. It's already a crowded sidewalk. Then he, the applicant just pointed out, well, there's already eight inches of brick that, that poke into that walkway. We think, although perhaps the sidewalk swings out further and maybe that isn't the public walkway. So I, it seems to me that my issue is, oh, and then he's gonna stucco on top of that. So my issue would be that I would like to make sure that, that we gain some of our sidewalk back as part of this uh, retrofit. Agree, disagree? I mean, if he was gonna take the bricks off and we we're gonna gain six inches back and then say, okay, uh, you can't have the, the doorway swing into that six inches. Okay, well, that's six inches of shoulder room that, that the pedestrians now have. Unless, of course, that isn't public right away, which I don't have, and I don't, I don't know whether that's true or not, but I think, I, think that's a, I think the condition that you put in there, which is the doorway, shouldn't swing in there, should, should extend to neither shall the bricks. But the bricks already exist, so you, well, so it's going to be hard to say. Well, we made a mistake, fifteen whatever. Hundred that's years a good ago. point. <laughs> that's a good point. Although they were being taken off as part of the retrofit, so clearly they're not structural. I didn't know that at the beginning, but um, I, I do agree with staff that the door. It, it's pretty crowded. I mean, if you go along there on the weekends, it's, that sidewalk is a bit of a nightmare, right? It so is. That door should definitely not protrude, protrude the way it does on this plan. I agree with that. Well, but that plan, apparently that drawing is inaccurate yeah. because it right. doesn't show the bricks there. Um, as the acting chair, I mean, could we, do you mind if we ask the applicant again about what is the difficulties with removing the brick? Because I don't know if that was... Well, if he's willing to come back up and talk about this, I'd love to hear from him. If that's okay. That's great. No, we want to get the right answer. Well, we don't know where... <laughs> Hi, my name's uh, Chuck Hammers. I'm the owner of the building and also owner of Pizza My Heart. Um, originally, we talked about removing the bricks. What we're finding on this building is if you remove anything, you uncover um, lots more problems on this building. So uh, we, one of my fears is we pull the bricks and that wall is compromised and my ties probably seven to 10 days from opening. And if we have to redo the structural on the entire end of that building, it will mess them up. Um, so those bricks, I've, I've been building owner for 25 such years. The bricks go down, they got covered on Bay Bar. They're also, if you look all the way down at Paradise on the next building, they're also there and they've stuccoed over them. So it was a common theme on both buildings. Um, I think it just got removed from sandbar at some point, um, but but it is on the other ones. I don't know if you have any other questions. So the biggest concern is about the unforeseen condition that you possibly could run into. Yes, and it would end up delaying, and, and these tenants, they've been through a lot, and, and we're trying to get them open as quick as possible, and, and I appreciate so much on how much the staff's working with us and, and uh, you know, getting us, you know, some of these guys back open, which hopefully will be soon. So, so do you foresee the tra the way you've got this two door system now at Pizza My Heart? That traffic flow will be better than it used to be, you know, because people line up for quite a ways on that sidewalk. Yeah, I mean, the, the, you know, the the real problem is people walk in, they've got their kids, they've got little kids. They're carrying pizzas, and then they got to back right Turn back around. through the line, yeah. and it just that's what backs up a lot of it. So, you know, I'm, I am really hoping that <clears throat> we don't impact. You know, Dominic at Mai Tai has been so nice about it, but the line often goes right in front of his door, and mm -hmm. and you know we are popular, and I'm I feel bad about it, but um, I, I would like to fix it for him. Okay, thank you. I guess, okay, so what I'm thinking about in terms of the stuccoing over the brick, it's, it, it's an implicit approval that we're okay with the encroachment. It's, we're not just letting it be grandfathered in. We're saying, okay, you can encroach, you, we're okay with that eight inches of encroachment, and you can go a little bit more because we're okay with that design. No, he's, uh, not exactly. He's taking the wood facade off the bay bar 
Now, just worried about me. Just worried about Mai Tai. Oh, Mai Tai. So, Mai Tai Beach is where the doors swing, unless I'm wrong, the doors swing open, and he's saying, okay, that, that when they swing open, according to the original plan, it's st it'll stick out six inches. Uh, oh, but that's not true because of the brick facade on Mai Tai Beach. No, no. Pokes, pokes the, out another eight. The one here he's talking about is the Bay Bar. It's the adjacent building. The adjacent, Mai Tai is two over, Bay Bar, then Pizza Mai Tai. <sighs> can we bring up the picture? Bring, us, bring up the page 36 so you can see them all. I'm sorry. Right. So in the in the bay bar uh, at the where those garbage cans are. Oh, uh, so okay. Right above those no, things. Oh, I get it. Are bricks covered so by confused. wood for some crazy reason and then painted, presumably? I guess. Right. So. Okay, so the bricks on the bay bar are being left alone and being are just painted, and it's the Mai Tai beach that they're stuck going over. No, but he's taking whatever that wood is. It, I don't know if it's a one inch or half inch or whatever. They're going to take that off and they're going to put stucco on. So effectively, you get the same dimension, effect more or less the same dimensions as what you see in that picture right there. Okay, which is roughly eight inches off of the building so core. So the, the doors like. open, they will poke out six, an additional six inches. I don't know. It's hard hard to say on this picture, this drawing. All right, so the, uh, basically, after all of my confusion, the answer should be <laughs> we should accept the condition as staff recommended, which is don't allow the doors to poke into this right away. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, unless I got it wrong. Why was that so hard for me? Okay. And then just that it is the same condition at the... The sandbar. Yeah, the, the bricks are painted at what at at Paradise. I mean, I'm just trying to look for that same condition somewhere else that's stuck it over. Yeah, Paradise, uh, at Paradise Grill. There were bricks there that have been stuccoed over, and they have a little slope below the window, and that's just the de detail. So the existing brick there. is there, stuccoed over. Yeah. So th so it appears that there was brick along from Paradise Grill all the way down to Mai Tai Beach. Some some of the stores in the past have removed the bricks. And one of the stores, Bay Bar, has covered over them with wood. So the doors that are encroaching into the public right away that we're talking about are only at Pizza My Heart. It's not all the doors in all of the uh, locations, just the Pizza My Heart doors. And my point about leaving the brick there is that if the brick is left there uh, at Mai Tai, that if you drew a line of the thickness of that brick all the way across, the doors at Pizza My Heart aren't going to stick much, much past the existing brick is in the right way. So it's, it's not a detriment, in, in my opinion, to have those doors stick out because the brick's already occupying that space. We've already kind of given that space <coughs> to the brick. But there's no brick there. No brick there. Right. Right. So it kind of goes back to the condition that staff is asking for when it would not be addressed because the doors will be into the area, but your comment is, but... 25 feet down, the bricks there and that's, are in that space. So a path of travel would be like that. Correct. Not be dramatic. Yeah. If we had removed all the brick, like then the proposal all the way around the building, the doors would appear to stick out into the right of way. But now that we're not, it's, uh, it doesn't seem to impact that. And as the architect, is there another way to address? Let's say that was a condition that we couldn't accept. Is there another way to address the condition the staff was asking about to get the doors so they didn't encroach? We could swing the doors in, but uh, the owners are worried that that may cause a problem with um, people. In, you know, as the doors swing in, you, you lose that space on the inside to stand the swing of the door. It's a bit of a safety issue, too, isn't it? For it is. Yeah, it's. They can swing in, but it's better if they swing out yeah. uh, for safety, yes. And you can't move that, um, well, let me hold it up for you to see. You can't move that wall in because of the ADA clearance? Correct, yeah. We're trying to accommodate as many ADA rules as we can in this modification. <laughs> That's what the uh, dash lines are in are the clearances needed for opening doors for ADA. 
So basically, <clears throat> we're saying that the, the width of the sidewalk varies depending on the facade of the house, uh, the building. Correct. The the narrowest it is pro is currently is probably at Mai Tai Beach because the brick is still there. Um, and it's wider at, at Bay Bar and Grill because the brick has been removed and the doors would swing back out into that encroachment that, like you say, if you draw the line from Mai Tai Beach all the way across. So if, if there was a cart that was exactly the width of the curb to the to the bricks on Mai Tai Beach and you were rolling down the rolling down the sidewalk, the doors this opening, the open doors would would not interfere with it because the line of sight is consistent. Yeah, I can't say that it would be exactly down to the inch that way, but yes, I understand your cart example, yes. The narrowest portion may not be at Mai Tai, even with the bricks, the narrowest portion is probably at Paradise because they've stuck it over the brick. Ah, so on this, on this view here, the right hand picture, what um, <clears throat> that wall that you're showing to the lower left of, of the door? It's hard for me to use an arrow here, but that's just the that's just the the um, studs. That's the wall of the building itself. On top of that is another six inches to the lower part of the page of brick. You're not showing those bricks. The bricks are not shown in that drawing, correct? Get it, Peter? Those I get bricks it. on top of that. So that that door. So it's right, right, here. right, yeah. right. right. So that, yeah, but they're gone. But they are on the no, further deck. No, they're not gone. No, they're there. They're still there, and they're covered with a wood panel. I thought you said it, but you're going to take all that off. We, that was the original proposal. That's why I wanted clarification today. Is we were going to remove the bricks. Now, after observation today, it appears that it's better to leave the bricks, which kind of negates right. this door into the right away. Right. Right. Keeps right. going back to Mai Tai Beach. Right. Uh, okay. Understood. It happens with all of us. Okay. There's a lot of different. I've been out of out town. There. I didn't get a chance to go down and look at the place properly. Okay. Okay. Um, I get it. Okay. I get it. It's so hypothetically the door now will stick about three or four inches past the brick. You think? Well, it looks I like would, without the brick, it's four inches. So with the brick there, it's maybe an inch or two. Okay. Anybody want to propose something? Um, I would move that we accept the staff recommendation with the 18 and 19 added. I don't think they're in the package right now, right? No, they're, they're just here uh, on the yeah. slideshow, but they were 18 and 19. So just to make sure that the door does not, in case these drawings aren't accurate, make sure that the door does not impede people on the sidewalk. That's all. Anyway, that's my motion. So, clarification that would, because... Um, a staff's comment was that the door wasn't going to impede anybody in the walkway plus or minus. I mean, I'm just trying to get clarification. Right now, we're, we're thinking because the brick's going to stay, the door will not be into the walkway. Right. And we, I guess you could reword 18 to say that instead of the, using the public right of, or the right of way since we don't seem to know where that is and we don't know what the what the impacts of the bricks are on that. You could add, a, add language of and or project beyond the existing facade building line yeah. or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So they build those stucco out for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could use that styrofoam stuff. So you are, so, so again, to, for clarification, you're saying that basically the door that they have which they almost hit because you'd question them ADA clearance and all that you can't move the wall back. They're pretty much stuck with that door. They open it up and as long as that swing doesn't encroach into... Beyond the existing... Um, the, yeah, the existing, not, not, yeah, the existing sidewalk, not the official public right-of-way, which yeah, may which be more. It's probably been, yeah, who knows what that is. So the existing brick with the, with, with with the, the wood. stucco with the stucco coating on it, right. that the door won't protrude past it. That's right. That's what I propose. I can second that. Any further discussion? <laughs> Let's have a vote. Yes. Sorry. Aye. 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 Well, very good.
good. Thank you. Um, good luck, gentlemen. <laughs> Before you guys leave, is there an update on when you guys think all the places will be open? Just are you guys publicly making any, um, comments about those? Yeah. Great, good. My tie should be open in a couple of weeks. Keeps my heart thin open. Yep. And um, my guess is that uh, uh, Bay Bar should be in line with Chef's tie. Craig, is it Craig Evans, the police officer? Yeah. He came by today because he was talking to me about the start of the kind of forecasting because no one. Can't wait to see it all open. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Um, item four is the director's report. Do we have anything? Yeah. So just been kind of brainstorming here. I'll give you a bit more uh, just upcoming items that you'll see next month. So the color and materials board discussion is on our list. Uh, and then we have a second story ADU, pretty standard project, um, but because it's a second story ADU over a garage, it's got to come before you. And then just a couple of updates on items that are either going back or um, to the council. So um, the commission heard 401 Capitola Avenue, the Capitola Tap House that, that was appealed and uh, was the uh, council gave direction of, for staff to come back with uh, recommendation for approval and findings. So that was uh, that was an interesting project. Um, and then nobody ended up appealing for 401 Capitola Road, which was the affordable housing project. Uh, all sorts of interest, but nobody uh, ended up appealing. And then um, other big big project that we had conceptual review for the assisted living and memory care at 3720 Capitola Road. Um, that applicant had a pretty rough go before the Planning Commission, a lot of uh, neighborhood opposition. And uh, so they've, they've kind of taken all that in and, and are making a second run to present their conceptual plan to the council with taking a lot of the neighborhood input into the design. Right, was that the project that they were annexing? Correct. Yeah, I, I think that was back in like October or something. So it's, it's uh, it's sort of back gaining momentum again to go like a, they, they kind of uh, took a time out to, to reassess the, the design after the comments they got. And so is that the only large project, if we want to call it large on what you guys refer to as, but large project that we see coming in at this time? I'm sorry? Is that the only larger size project we see coming in at this time? Um, yeah, so that one, if given the go ahead by council, uh, that would be the Probably the next biggest thing I would see coming back to the Planning Commission. The, the determination the council needs to make, though, is whether it's a public benefit or not. And so, um, you know, I, I don't, tough to know how that's going to go. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, commission communications, anybody got anything? Yeah, I got one thing. Um, so, um, Commissioner Jensen and I attended the Planning Commissioner's Academy last week down in Garden Grove. Um, I, I think our collective observations was it was it was very good and very helpful for us. Um, pretty well attended and a very, I mean, I've been to a lot of conferences over the years, you know, it's mostly engineering stuff so that they're kind of calmed down, but these people were really energized. I mean, it was very impressive. Um, every single Planning Commission at least the ones I talked to, and they're 
up and down the state have the same sort of concern, problems, issues to deal with that we have, in, especially the ones on the coast, which basically have no land to build housing on, right? And so they have this housing element and each one of their, their communities were given these outrageous numbers and they're trying to figure out what the heck to do. Um, so one of the one of the workshops I went to was you know trying to deal with that issue and you know what's the strategy for doing that and the the number one suggestion from people that have been through this um, was to really engage the community a lot. You can't over engage the community, um, and they uh, a lot of them have held workshops similar to what we had a couple of weeks ago, um, but then you know they they in more depth and in, in, uh, discussing a lot of subjects, like for example, um, some of the topics I was thinking of, State Bill 9, which I call the subdivision bill, right? It allows you to divide up your land and then develop it. Uh, AB 686, which is the AFFH, affirmative, affirmatively furthering fair housing, um, passed a couple of years ago. And how does that, it has a lot of, uh, Requests, not requests. I, it, it, a lot of things you need to do in, in your housing element going forward that haven't been requested before. And, and it, you know, we keep getting these emails about how every city in the state's getting sued if they don't do this, right? So I, I don't know if that any of that suit stuff is true or not. I'd like to have a workshop to find out, you know, f from somebody who knows, like, what are the impacts if you don't do this right? Which I know uh, the, the biggest one I would be worried about is the state funding and some of the aspects, some of the money we get from the state could be cut off. Um, anyway, I would just like us to talk about, you know, should we have more of these community outreach type uh, events like we had a couple weeks ago? The one person who was leading this said it, they're, they're not, um, uh, not subject to, uh, what's the act? No, the Brown Act. Mm. You don't have to conduct them in the same way with as formally as we do these meetings because they're just in information sessions. We're not making a decision. So you could have, you don't really have to do it as formally, although it's probably safe just to do it the way we are doing it, like we did last time. But uh, any comments to this notion? I think that would be a fair question to ask Katie and the attorney, right? Wouldn't that be good for just for Brown Act? If we wanted to sure. hold community meetings, yeah. Uh, um, I share the same feedback from the conference. That's what a lot of people are talking about: is community outreach, community outreach, community outreach. I think this might maybe Paul come into play when um, the map gets a little more fa finalized. Mm -hmm. That you know, I would think when that map comes out, we all we have to do is plan, right, or make recommendations for planning on how that land. Be. But I think to reach out to that community and say. You know, just so you know, city council took action. The plan was approved, whatever. But to tell people in time what this could look like, or and I think it should be a gamut, not creating hysteria, but it could be, you know, like we all talk about the project. What do you call it? Four oh. Wait, what's the number? Four oh one. The four oh one. You know, it has thirty six parking spots. It could have had zero. You know, if they built it to our standards, it would have had you know whatever seventy nine. You know. But so everybody knows that going into this, and maybe there might be less hysteria around these issues. On that, if we talk about them, people can make, you know, plans or understand what that impact is coming, um, and stuff. Also, I would hope maybe from that too. You know, I always save. You know, thirteen hundred thirty-six. Well, I guess we only need thirteen hundred units now. But we have put we have we put in thirteen hundred ADUs. We wouldn't have to talk about it, right? So <laughs> that's why I was trying to get one out of this person today. But uh, you know, I said I don't. I just you know I think community outreach and talking about things like that um, might downplay some of the exposure that we have and just educate. I know it's education to myself, and then just going to the conference educate, but trying to get out to our community. So, but I share that. That's a lot of people are talking about down there. Was there a part of that? Was there a presentation like from the state, like a? a uh, film strip or a presentation that says, okay, here's how we got here, you know, going back to, you know, population growth in California and this and that, and then all the various experts saying, here's how you deal with density, and this is how we came about, you know, so there was like an overview that says, okay, here's, it's not us versus the state, it's like, here's what, you know, was there any kind of a presentation? Uh, no, the, the HCD person, housing and community development person for the state actually got sick or had some some issues, so she didn't actually show up, and they didn't have a, 
I'm sure there is a pr presentation somewhere that we can dig up. Um, there's a, there is a lot of information out there that uh, if you search around to find, look for it, it, it does exist. Yeah, I, w I would think that would be a, in terms of public education, say, well, you know, where did this come from? Where, well, then, why, you know, why, why do we feel we're against the state and we have elected state representatives? We, you know, how are we working together? Where did this come from? Well, the one thing I, I do remember, the one statistic they had and it, uh, was the, uh, we have to, by 2035, you have to add 3.5 million housing units in the state. And that's based off of, you know, some analysis of the population uh, growth and population changes in it you know, people coming and going from California. And the demographics are changing over time, of course, right? Um, so they factored, they, they did talk about how they factor all that stuff together, but they never showed the actual, you know, formulaic uh, development of these uh, requirements that they flow down to the nine different, uh, you know, government organizations that then split them up into the cities. Yeah, that, that's where I think I would, I would personally get the most out of is, I've done a little bit of digging along the same lines, like, well, where did this come from? How, where, where did, why are our arena, why are our arena numbers what they are? Blah blah blah. And uh, to have a, to have some sort of formal presentation where it's clear, and here's where it here's where it all came from, and here's how we participated, and here, you know, it would be like, okay, that now we're all on the same page. I mean, we're we're not the only ones with sort of what you might think are extreme numbers. Our thirteen thirty six is yeah. kind of on average with what. The people I talk to, even out in Manteca, you think Manteca, okay, it's got lots of room, right? They don't have a lot of room, and they've got a requirement that they are struggling trying to figure out. Yeah. So, I found the interesting thing was um, the closing uh, speaker, and he was talking about how they're planning for you know everything, and the, then they're talking about Newsom might be putting out a housing bill um, uh, bond measure, maybe for five billion dollars, and he said, you know, if you just take the number that we need. And if the average house for uh, for affordable housing is five hundred thousand dollars to build, we need five hundred billion. So what's five million? I mean, what's five billion going to do in a bond measure? You know, like there's this. Sure, we're all planning for it, but the whole thing no one's planning for is how's it ever going to be funded? You know, um, you know, because it doesn't. Even though you plan for it, it has to get built because there's a need. So it's interesting to see those numbers kind of put back. It, you know, how's it going to get to that point? So. Um, I do have um, another question. Um, I've just been, I saw, it was in the Sentinel today, I think, um, talking about Santa Cruz was turning in their housing plan, and I think there's Watsonville might have been. Um, w um, where are we on our timeline? I was just, I think everybody's nervous about it, but like other cities in our local area, are, are they like a little bit ahead of us on that? Just an update? Uh, I thought we were submitting in May. Okay. I think that's our schedule. Um, I, I have a couple of other notes here for Katie on, based on your discussion as well. So I, she, she may follow up with you with the, with the schedule. It seems like you, you probably want a program or a schedule of our, our community outreach. I mean, it seems like that was, that was something I was going to suggest when I debrief with Katie about the meeting tonight. So we can yeah. follow up with the whole commission on. Yeah, I think these are all just very positive, but you know, it just seems like when I got a lot of, the planning commissioners I talked to were like, I tried to find some that were uh, like me, you know, uh, 10 weeks old. And then, um, you know, some that were 10 years, you know, 15 years in um, in the role. And they also shared the same thing about how they're trying to get some headway in the community by having over communicating about this stuff and trying to make it not be like that your city is doing this that and not putting it on the state, but like this is a mandate and this is what we're doing, doing the best job we all can. So. Yeah, I think, I think Peter's right. If we can give a rationale for the numbers, that, that would help a lot. But we also, we also have to explain to people that we do need affordable housing, right? I mean, and the number of units of affordable housing we're going to need is pretty high. And people need to understand that this 4401 Capitola Road is not the last one. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> right? So I, I don't know how we get that message out there. But, you know, I'm happy to work with you and staff and Katie and, you know, if we want to, let's take a look at what is already planned and if we want to add more, maybe we consider doing that. There's a schedule. Yeah. <laughs> and we can share that with the commission. I mean, it's okay. not. 
Okay. Um, is that, is that all it. everybody has? Okay. All right. So item six, adjournment. I don't like using the gas. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me nervous. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.